O come, O come, Emmanuel, ransom captive Israel. He mourns in lonely exile here. Upon the Son of God draws near. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you. In the name of the Lord, Vic, in Spirit, Nave, Amen. The grace of the Lord, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You're all welcome, no matter who you are, what race, creed. Now, today it's the Mass for the 17th of uh, December, which is the third Sunday of Advent, or is it preparing away for the Lord, as you know. Advent's about that. And uh, today's Gospel, well, we really want to know who John the Baptist is. Well, you probably know, I won't insult your intelligence too much. Uh, you can read a lot about him on, the, on, the, on the, your internet. He doesn't make any extravagant claims like myself. He's just a simple person. He goes around maybe like some, he might scare some people the way he dress. Maybe he wouldn't. You seen a man going around with locusts on. He reminds me like a fellow you used to see in Newcastle, a very good uh, Christian he was, and he be uh, at the uh, young lads uh, to reform. He 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 was a reform man that uh, had a lot of problems in his life, early life. So John the Baptist, he probably scared the wits of some people here, uh, and he was preparing a way for someone else. He was a forerunner of Jesus Christ in simple terms, and it's worth remembering as we begin our celebration that Jesus was a forerunner. He was telling me that it was greater than me to come and that was Jesus Christ. So you can read it all in, in your local paper or in your book, whatever you like. I was not going to say what an old parish priest once said in Cooley uh, where I was born. I remember he said he was reading something in the paper and he couldn't make it. I said you see it all in the Democrat anyway. So, you can look it up, you're not stupid people. So, uh, we must get ready, make remorse for our sins here now, before we offer up the sacrifice and don't take it lightly. Uh, just think about it for a minute and then we'll proceed with the confidior, or the, yeah, I confess. I confess for Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Virgin, ever Mary, all the angels and saints, and you, my sisters and brothers, to pray for me to the Lord of God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins. And bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord have mercy. And now we come, no glory as I said, during the month, uh, this season. We get Easter, so we're going to say now, have the uh, opening prayer. Third Sunday of Advent. Let us pray this Advent for the joy and hope in the coming of the Lord. You heard me give a little uh, verse of joy to the O come, O come Emmanuel. So, a little joy. So, for the joy in the coming in the Lord. Father 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, ever faithful to your promises, and ever close to your church, the earth rejoices in the hope of the Saviour's coming, and looks forward with longing to his return at the end of time. Prepare our hearts and remove the sadness that hinders us from feeling the joy and hope which his presence will bestow. For your Lord forever and ever. Amen. And the first reading today, it's from the prophet Isaiah. Be all sitting down nice and comfortable and taking it in. So here we hear about, I exalt for the joy in the Lord. A lot of people just love it. When you think of that, it's lovely, but you must get your act together to do it, to enjoy it. You get into the Lord's uh, good favour. So, the Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord. I exalt for the joy of the, in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has wrapped me in the cloak of integrity, like a bridegroom wearing his wreath, like a bride adorned in her jewels. For as an earth makes fresh things grow, as a garden makes seeds spring up, so will the Lord make both integrity and praise spring up in the sight of the nations. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Sponsorial Psalm, the response is, My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul glorifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in him, my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her nothing less. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty God works marvels for me. Holy his name, his mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. My soul rejoices in my God. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy. My soul rejoices in my God. Second reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, we hear where may you all be kept safe and uh, spirit, soul and body to, uh, today for the coming of the Lord. Be happy at all times, pray continuously and for all things give thanks to God because this is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. Never try to suppress the spirit or treat the gift of prophecy with contempt. Think before you do anything. Hold on to what is good and avoid from every form of evil. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy and may you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul and body. For the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, God has called you and he will not fail you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we stand. We start with the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah. 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 The spirit of the Lord has been given to me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor. Hallelujah. In today's gospel, it's from the Cordon of St. John. It's a very familiar gospel. In the Latin Mass, it's very familiar, this gospel. So uh, we'll... Uh, there stands amongst you, and unknown to you, the one who's coming after me. A man came, and I'm reading now from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to thee, O Lord. A man came, sent by God. His name was John. 
He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, John the Baptist, only a witness to speak for the light. And this is how John appeared as a witness, John the Baptist, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He not only declared, but he declared quite openly, I am not the Christ. He made himself clear, well clear, neither am I the Christ. Well then, they asked, are you Elijah? I am not he, he said. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We must take back an answer to those who sent us. What have you to say about yourself? So John said, I am as Isaiah prophesies in the Old Testament. Now, these men had uh, been sent by the Pharisees and they put this further question to uh, John the Baptist. Why are you baptizing if you are not the Christ and not Elijah and not the prophet? And John replied, I baptize with water, but there stands among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me, and I am not able to undo his sandal strap. This happened at, at Bethany, on the far side of the River Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, uh, it'd be a bit uh, amazing to hear uh, uh, John, who he was, I want to know. Naturally, when I would go around places when I was at India first, as I uh, come from my lineage, to be saying, how is he, what is he, what is he? And you do, <laughs> it's very taxing on you, explaining to everybody. So if you give information and you tell them to read it, and that's it. So, uh, he was a forerunner of Jesus Christ, simply who he was, not keepers in suspense. And he was coming and he said that the man is greater than me that's coming was Jesus. And Jesus uh, will anoint you with the Holy Spirit. That's a, a, something equivalent to our confirmation, you're anointed with the Holy Spirit. On demand or dust and the dust shall return you, uh, not a thump on the cheek, but a, a wee little tip. So, always remember that John is the forerunner. I'm not going to give you a lot of stuff today because you're getting busy with Christmas. You can read more depth in it if you like. You're around in locusts and that honey. I like that myself. I don't like locusts and I lived in the, in the desert. It was a, a tough station. So he would like to go to scar the life out of many people. Maybe he wouldn't, but <laughs> if I see him coming, uh, if he was like a Billy I knew, he could scare you if you were doing anything wrong and you'd want to get your act right. So that's what he done. He was a forerunner. It was too much to come all of a sudden, maybe Jesus. Uh, you know, if you come all of a sudden, they wouldn't understand. But then the crack was going round to talk and he was a forerunner of Jesus. So they were baptized and a lot, give the benefit of the doubt, and they got baptized. And they were despised by the Jewish population at that time, you know. So if you do anything new and you're ahead of your time, you ought to stand for criticism. So Jesus did come, and we are preparing for Jesus now. And uh, there's another Sunday to go, and then we're on to Christmas. So I hope you're all very well, and you get worked up well if you're in Grenor and you're going across on the ferry. It's a good form of transport. A bit cold, but a little, you have to gain, you have to venture to gain. So if you like that, just a pity that they hadn't a crib in the boat or something to show about Jesus' birth, not just Santa. Because that reminds me of the commercial end of Christmas. So I like to see the spiritual end of Christmas more emphasised in houses, have cribs up and this type of thing. Something to remind you of Jesus' birth. You can get videos and all that. So it's good to look at that, especially with the kids, because they think too much, possibly, oh, Santa, what's Christmas about? Santa Claus. <laughs> so it's a lot more than that. 
it's about Jesus birth and we remember it over 2000 years ago born in an inn a very humble place so we'll say more about that now as we get on to Christmas so now for that matter I'm going to tell you to relax as we uh, going to say the Apostles Creed now I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was received by the Virgin Mary, no, was received by the Holy Spirit, sorry, and born of the Virgin Mary. And he suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was the Roman governor, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day, he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic it's Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. I'd just like to say just two words there before we go on. Uh, uh, by church we mean the assembly of people uh, it's not a building as many people think and a universal the catholic means universal if you want to translate it out without giving you a whole load of uh, explanation so it's the universal church and that was the, uh, uh, having the apostolic succession it come from peter at the last supper and like, that's how we come, there's a lineage who we were ordained by. And if you have a broken lineage, you've got your mandate through uh, the Last Supper to minister to the people. Some people may think they have a mandate on their own. Well, let them go ahead. I'm not faulting them down, but we have a, a, a lineage and that's what we come from. It's apostolic church, a Roman Catholic church or the Orthodox. It's all apostolic. So we leave it to you. And we'll move on now with the prayers of the faithful. So be seated. I like people to be relaxed when they're praying. There's no point in looking out the door and hoping it'll be five lit in five minutes. No. So as we joyfully await the birth of Jesus Christ, let us place our intentions before the Father whose faithful love extends from its age for the church that's for everybody, believers on the Christian faith, Christianity, that we may show by our lives that Christ is the light of the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Grace to hear us. For those who witness to the gospel in dangerous environments, and there's a lot of them at the moment, with wars and things breaking out, and... Uh, a lot of uh, opposition for Christianity and some people getting beheaded etc I have got so for all those people who witness to the gospel in dangerous environments that they may be strengthened through our prayers so that they may hear of the birth of the Messiah who is Jesus Christ Lord hear us Lord praise hear us and of course we're going to pray now for all Christians, all believers in, in Christ Jesus, that we may work together in unity, like Pope Francis is trying to do. Get out, he's making a good job, getting people to see, break down barriers, uh, get them to work together and work in faith to make straight the path for the Messiah. Lord, hear us, not grace to hear us. Now you can say a little quiet prayer for yourself, make a petition. Lord hear us, Lord grace to hear us. And for those that who have fallen asleep and died in this life, the falling asleep in the Lord, that the Lord be merciful to all and may he bring healing and consolation to the grieving loved ones. Lord, hear us, Lord, grace to hear us. 
Father, you are of help of all times of the day and all the days of our lives. Hear our prayers and call us to live in your grace more fully. We pray through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands have become for us the bread of life. Let's be God forever. In the midst of the Lord and wine, we come to share in the bread of Christ. We have a sad to share in our humanity. Bless are you, Lord God of all creation, and to your goodness we have the swine to walk on. Fruit of the earth. Fruit of the vine actually under the earth and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let's be God forever. With humble spirit and comfort heart may we be accepted to you, O Lord, and may sacrifice and incense this day be patient to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours is, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for good and good of all his holy church. And now we're going to have the prayer over the gifts we have on the altar here. Holy table, if you want to call it. Uh, Lord, may the gift we offer in faith and love be a continual sacrifice in your honour and truly become our Eucharist and our salvation. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to do Eucharistic prayer number two. <coughs> the Lord be with you and with your spirits. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. And we thanks, Lord of God. It is right and just. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. When he humbled himself to come among us as a man, he fulfilled the plan he formed long ago and opened for us the way of salvation. Now we watch for the day, hoping that the salvation promised us will be ours, when Christ the Lord will come again in glory, and so with all the choirs of angels in heaven we proclaim your unending hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth is full of your glory, is that in the highest? And I'm also going to do the second preface, which is from the 17th. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks to Jesus Christ the Lord. His future coming was proclaimed by the prophets. The Virgin Mother bore him in her womb, with love be on all telling. John the Baptist was his herald and made him known when at last he came in his love Christ has filled us with joy as we prepare to celebrate his birth so that when he comes we may find us watching in prayer our hearts filled with wonder and praise and so with all the choirs of angels in heaven 
we proclaim your glory and drown and ending him of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth is full of your glory, your son in the highest, blessed he comes in the name of the Lord, your son in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, that they may become for us the bloody and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus Christ was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and given thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which was given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord and to come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis the Pope, Michael the Patriarch, me, the humble bishop, and all the bishops in charity. And remember, all our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages may we merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your son jesus christ to him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, draw me divine, teach him, we are dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be the name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the King of the Power and glory goes down forever. Lord Jesus Christ. You said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Now we offer each other the sign of peace anyway, you do it. The peace of our Lord be with you always, everybody, any faith. I offer peace to anyone, enemies, friends. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Mingling of the body and blood bring eternal life to those who did receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world of merciness. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world of merciness. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. 
May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe in eternal life, man. Say to the anxious, be strong and fear not. Our God will come to save us. Body of Christ, Henry. Remember now, this is a, a time you can say a few prayers. Make your special petition again. You're very close to Jesus when you receive. Any of you can try it. If you have faith and trust, you do that. Pass the lips is through the Lord, make possess and purity of our given us in time for healing and charity. Amen. You can just relax him under the put that there, it's gonna be worse. Mm. O sacrament, O holy. O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray now. God of mercy, may this Eucharist bring us your divine help, free us from our sins, and prepare us for the birthday of your Saviour who is Lord for ever and ever. Amen. Now bow your heads for the solemn blessing and I'll give her a wee ring here when you say Amen. You believe that the Son of God once came to us. You look for him to come again. May his come and bring you the light of his holiness <coughs> and free you from his blessing. Amen. May God make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and untiring in love all the days of your life. Amen. You rejoice that our Passover came to live with us as man. Our Redeemer came to live with us as man. When he comes again in glory, may he reward you with endless life. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. You love and serve the Lord. Remember the needy at this time. Remember to love your neighbour with your heart and soul and all your mind. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love God. 
to love everybody. Show love, that's what Christ was about. There's people hungry out there and there's no grub and that. Do your best. So now... Yeah. Sweetheart of Jesus, fond of love and mercy, today we call thy blessing to implore. Oh, touch your hearts so cold and so ungraceful, and make them, Lord, thine own forevermore. Heart of Jesus, we ye implore. Oh, make us love thee more, more and more. Thank you very much, everybody, and I hope you all have a, a very good weekend. And get wrapped up well for anyone here that's going on this.